Hey guys, Doug B here, your average axe wielding hack. Hey, I am still going through video suggestions that you guys sent in. Like this one from Paul Terrio. I'm new to Axe FX. Your vids really help me get around and familiar quickly with the unit. I'd like to see a video on tone matching popular artists. I've heard some examples and sounds bang on. Anyway, I'm still deep diving into your playlist, but great work, thanks. Well, you are very welcome, Paul. Tone matching has been on my list of to-do things here for quite a while, so perfect time right now to do it, so let's dig in. Tone matching appears to be similar in concept to profiling on the Kemper, although I'm sure I'll get some comments telling me that I'm way off base. Anyway, with tone matching, there are three possible scenarios. Capturing audio from another modeler, from a microphone, or from a recording. For this video, we're going to capture audio from a recording. And in this case, Dickie Betts' tone from the Allman Brothers at Fillmore East album. A little background. The Fillmore East album came out in August 1971 and was reviewed in Rolling Stone magazine that same month. I was only 14 and getting ready to start high school but had already been gigging for two years and had dozens of gigs under my belt from the various teen dances and bars that our band played at back in the day. I read Rolling Stone to get a head up on new albums because back then they used to review a good dozen new albums per issue. I read the review of the Fillmore East album, which got a four-star review, the best that Rolling Stone gave. I went back downtown to Central Music and Hobbies and they had one copy of that album in stock. I took it home, put on side one, and was totally hooked. At the time, I couldn't tell the difference between Dwayne Allman's tone and Dickie Betts' tone. All I knew is that I loved all of it. Seven months later, I bought my first Les Paul, a Sunburst 72 Deluxe. I also stopped using a fuzz pedal and tried getting natural distortion, like Dwayne and Dickie did. I wasn't quite as successful as they were, though. I've been chasing the tone on that album for 50 years now. I've seen the Allman Brothers at least a dozen times. Unfortunately, I never did get to see Dwayne because I was too young. But I got to see and hear a lot of Dickie Betts. Say what you will about his personal life, he is an amazing player and songwriter. And he always sounds like Dickie Betts, no matter what he plays. Dwayne's tone was more distorted. Dickie played a lot of cleaner stuff, but his tone from that Gold Top Les Paul and 100 Watt Marshall stack could also growl when he wanted. In order to tone match with a recording, the mini manual suggests using lossless recordings such as Wave, AIFF, or FLAC. Do not use lossy recordings such as MP3 or YouTube audio if at all possible. However, I know of at least one factory preset that used the YouTube recording as the source, and it came out great. I used Dickie's solo section from the song You Don't Love Me for my reference signal. It might not be the best to use, but it was the only spot where I could find him playing all by himself. Now let's take a quick look at the steps involved in tone matching using a recording. Number one, create. You create a starting preset that is reasonably close to the desired sound. Number two, connect. You connect your reference signal to the Axe FX3. We'll discuss the details in a minute. Number three, capture. You choose a mode on the config page of the tone match block. For this example, we would choose offline. We'll get into the rest of the process in just a bit. Number four, compare. To finish capturing and completing the process, press Match in Axe Edit or the D knob on the front panel. Now you can compare your tone match to your reference material. Number five, complete. You can refine your settings if your results aren't to your liking. Recapture until you achieve a match that you are happy with. When you save the preset, the tone match data is saved right in the preset. You can also create a user cab IR from the tone match data via the export function. That way you can use it in multiple presets. Okay, now let's go over each step required to capture Dickie Betts' tone. Number one, create a starting preset. I used Quick Build to create a starting preset for this test. It uses the in, amp, tone match, and out block to start off with. Your starting preset should have no effects. The possible exceptions would be either a drive pedal or EQ that is necessary to get the starting preset to sound or feel right. Otherwise, add effects afterwards. The info I was able to find says that Dickie played his Gold Top Les Paul through a 100 watt Marshall amp into cabs using 12 inch JBL speakers with silver cones. I don't have my Gold Top Les Paul anymore, but my Paul Reed Smith McCarty 594 should do a fine job. 
The tone match mini manual suggests that we shouldn't use a cab block when using a recording to match against, unless you need a stand-in cab so things are listenable while you dial it in. Just remember to remove it before you do the capture of the local signal. I forgot to do that in my initial test and the results were pretty bad. At first I chose the Plexi 100 watt for the amp block, but it was too dark. I switched to the Plexi 100 watt 1970, of course in channel A. Step two is the connect step. The tone match block needs to monitor both the external reference signal and the local signal. For this video, our external reference signal is the 26 seconds of audio from the Allman Brothers CD. And the local signal is the audio of my guitar playing from the starting preset. You need to tell the tone match block where it will get the reference signal from. In this case, it'll be the USB output from my Mac Mini. Since USB 1 and 2 is the default, we'll use that. You need to set the output device in your system to be the Axe FX3 in order for the USB signal to be sent there. What I had to do in order to get this to work was to use my DAW, which is Logic Pro. I had to tell it that the Axe FX3 is my audio interface, and then I had to copy the song into Logic Pro and edit it down to the 26 seconds that I wanted. Now, tone matching is mono, so you need to set the reference channel parameter on the config page. Since Dickie's guitar is mainly in the right channel, we'll tell it to monitor the right channel. And now for the local, which is me, just some left and right. Next thing is making sure that your levels are set correctly because it's important that there's no clipping anywhere in the signal path. You can use the front panel, LEDs, or the meters page of the home menu to monitor the levels. If there is clipping of your reference signal, either turn it down at the source or use IO levels to trim the input signal. Step three is the capture step. As mentioned before, use lossless sources if possible. I played the 26 second section of Dickie Bet soloing from CD. Mode on the config page needs to be set to offline. Now by default, the capture process uses about 10 seconds of audio. You can change that by increasing or decreasing the averaging time. I bumped it up to 16.35 seconds. By setting the knob fully clockwise, you'll engage peak hold mode right there. Peak hold mode uses the entire duration of the reference signal, which in this case would be the entire 26 second audio clip. Now you'd go to the capture page in the tone match edit menu. If you're using the front panel, you'd press knob A to start the reference signal capture. Press knob B to start the local signal capture. You could also push knob C to start both at the same time. Press knob D to stop the capture process. Now you can also do this in Axe Edit in the capture page. There's a slider here for the start reference on and off. There's a slider for the start local on and off. There's a button for start both. So now what you would do is you would press the match button in the capture page. See, this one right here is the signal from the CD. This is the signal from my guitar. I saved you guys from having to hear that because when you hear guitar playing through an amp with no cab, it is pretty rough. Believe me, you don't want to hear that. So you press match and then you go back to the config page and this is the resulting curve right here. If the match doesn't sound right, go back to the capture page and try again after checking connections, levels, source material, etc. Always try to match levels as closely as possible when comparing two sources. If the match is way off, check levels, check routing, and try again. Finally, we get to step five, the complete step. This is where you would do any necessary fine tuning. You might need to adjust amount or smoothing, and you might also add effect blocks like delay and reverb. When you look at the match graph on the config page, you see a big bump at 3591 hertz. That actually does match the same bump in the reference signal. See this guy right here, although it says 3594 hertz. But to my ears, it was harsh. So I added a parametric EQ block, went to 3591, and dropped it down minus 7 dB. Seemed to smooth it out a little bit. I also added a reverb block using the concert hall reverb. I brought the mix down to 6.5%. Now when you're satisfied, you press store, then enter, and then enter again if you're using the front panel. In Axe Edit, simply hit save. This will save the tone match result right inside of the preset. You can also export the tone match result as a user cab IR. See, we can go here to the export page. You can choose the user bank you want to use. You can choose the number within the user bank and you can create a new name. And then you would press the export button. That way you can use it with many presets. Now I'll replay the original 26 second clip and then I'll demo the new preset to see how close I got.
So there you have it guys, my take on tone matching a famous artist. In this case, Dickie Betts from an album 51 years ago. If you can find a recording of one of your favorite artists, give tone matching a try and let me know how it worked out for you. The process itself is pretty easy, but it does involve a lot of going back and forth. The best reference material has no effects and lots of dense chords, lots of playing up and down the neck. The source I used was soloing, and I can see why that wasn't recommended. I'm not totally happy with the results, and if I was planning on using this presets, I would redo it again from scratch. But now I know how the process works, and you know, it'll go a lot easier the next time. Anyway, like I said earlier, try it out. Let me know how it worked out for you. Now, next Wednesday, we will be back at the factory again, digging through those presets and letting the random number generator pick out a preset for us. Now, you don't want to miss that. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. All right, guys, we will see you next Wednesday. Have a great weekend.